We have now had two um, police killings, both in the state of Minnesota. It's kind of a little strange. Um, not that far from each other. There was, of course, the George Floyd killing by um, Chauvin, and that trial is ongoing. And then, as if that weren't bad enough, suddenly now we have the Dante Wright um, shooting uh, by um, a uh, veteran of the Minnesota Police Department, Kim Potter, a female who uh, evidently was going for her taser and pulled out her gun. Now, the question I'm thinking about as I look at the Chauvin trial on the one hand and then this Dante Wright shooting on the other is, who is at fault here? Are we, is, does the fault lie with the individual, the quote, bad apple that is doing this? Uh, or is the fault with the system? Now, the general assumption is that the fault is with the system. Uh, that's the basis of defund the police. It's not this policeman or that policeman, because then the remedy would be, let's get rid of the bad apples and bring in only good apples. But no, the whole idea that there's something in the police training, in the system itself, that needs to be overhauled, if not gotten rid of or completely, yes, Rashida Talib, it wasn't an accident, she says. I mean, this is unbelievable, making claims that haven't even been um, examined, let alone tried. And she goes, policing in our country is inherently and intentionally racist. And then she goes, no more policing, incarceration, and militarization. It can't be reformed. So uh, I guess she's saying that there should be no cops. Well, if there should be no cops, presumably we would all need to defend ourselves, which, we would, mean, which would mean we would all need to be probably heavily armed. But I guess she probably means no cops and then no guns for the citizens either. Let's take the guns away. And then how are we supposed to defend ourselves? The criminals are the only ones who have guns. Uh, here's Obama. Now, Obama would, I think, not go that far. He's too kind of graceful and sneaky for that. Uh, and he comes out with his one of his usual classic Obamaisms. He goes, this is also a reminder of how badly we need to reimagine policing. <laughs> very, this is a very Obama statement, is the solution is to reimagine policing. I mean, the police who have been doing work for, you know, decades, if not centuries, all over the world, but somehow here's Obama, kind of in his library or at his Netflix office, you know, I have, I have an idea for reimagining policing. <laughs> Almost like a, the next thing, then we're talking about the military, you know, soldiers fighting, they've been, veterans have been to Iraq multiple times, Afghanistan. I think I'm going to ima reimagine military strategy. <laughs> so this is this is the uh, this is the Obama pose, and I think it should, we can recognize it for its ludicrousness. But the point I want to make here is this, and that is that uh, in the case of the um, Dante Wright shooting, it may be that we are dealing with an institutional problem, and I say this because. The immediate defense of Kim Potter uh, has been, oh, she didn't mean it, it's an accident. Well, to some degree, that's even more alarming because think about it, if, if uh, Kim Potter meant to shoot him, presumably she felt a sense of threat, she felt he was a grave danger, she felt that he was about to make a getaway, there would be some stated reason for using the weapon. You can agree with the reason or disagree, maybe the reason is persuasive or not, but in her mind, she felt that fear and necessity that compelled her to do that. But to say, I didn't mean to do it, uh, I meant to pull my taser, which is a very different object than a gun. You, as Debbie was saying to me, she's like, you have to actually pull the trigger to discharge a gun. It doesn't discharge itself. So the bottom line of it is here, something seems to be very wrong with the training. If a experienced police officer, this is a woman who's been, I believe, 20 years plus at the department as a patrol officer, um, and for her not to be able to tell the difference between a taser and a gun, this I think is a problem. Now, no one is saying that this was motivated by race. In fact, interestingly, in the, in the Derek Chauvin case, there's been very little about race. So the whole big hoopla was, you know, Black Lives Matter, this is a racial incident, it's a white cop. But ironically, what we seem to be dealing with here is not a racial issue. Presumably, Derek Chauvin would have done it to someone else if he if he had to or if he could. Now, let's turn to the Chauvin case because I've been really interested to see one after the other uh, cops, uh, in fact, including the chief of police for that, for his department, all coming up solemnly and saying basically, oh no, 
Uh, we don't teach people to do these knee holds. We don't tell people to put their knee on someone's neck for eight or nine minutes. Uh, this is not part of the manual. This is not what we train people to do. So you can see what's going on here. What the prosecution is doing with the help of all these cops is saying there is no institutional problem. This Chauvin guy is a bad apple. So in other words, they're kind of throwing him under the bus, but not taking responsibility as a department. So in other words, the prosecution is putting forward a case, which is being, by the way, supported by the media. You know, I turn on CNN every single day. Very moving testimony, completely persuasive. So here is CNN, sort of eager to believe one side. But I don't think, I think the guys at CNN, the journalists who are gaga over the prosecution, are too dumb to see that what the prosecution is advancing is a theory totally different than the left's theory. Their theory is the police department is fine. The manual is fine. The training is fine, but like any organization, you get some bad guys who become part of it. Chauvin is one of the bad guys and maybe the other couple of guys with him also. But the bottom line of it is the problem is not institutional. It is personal to Chauvin. So the idea here is that by, quote, sacrificing Chauvin, the department is protecting itself. And as for the left that's cheering on this process, they don't seem to have gotten the point that they are on board with a whole set of arguments that calls not for defunding the police, but just for making sure that guys like Chauvin aren't part of the police.